from literature to the arts through to music, most African artists, with their creative expressions, have shaped narratives and inspired unity across the African continent and beyond. Pan African thought or Pan Africanism is that idea that all people of African descent, regardless of where they may find themselves, have common interest and shall therefore be unified. Pan Africanism can be said to have its origins in the struggles of the African people against enslavement and colonization that bedeviled the continent, taking away its labor force and destroying families. At its core, Pan Africanism is a belief that all African people, both on the continent and in the diaspora, share not merely a common history but a common destiny that all Africans belong to a single race. Pan African thought influenced the establishment of the Organization of African Unity, which was succeeded by the African Union in 1963. Pan African advocates include leaders and academics such as Emperor Haile Selassie, Edward Wilmot Blyden, Enamdi Azikiwi, Patrice Lumumba, Julius Nyerere, Ahmed Sekuture, Kwame Nkrumah, Robert Mugabe, Thomas Sankara, Kwame Ture, Muammar Gaddafi, Walter Rudney, Luweri, Kaguta, Museveni, Joseph Robert Love, Marcus Gavi, Malcolm X, Joseph Ephraim Kesley Hayford, and William Edward Du Bois. Pan Africanists believe that solidarity will enable the continent to fulfill its potential to independently provide for all its people. Undoubtedly, an all African alliance would empower African people globally. I take a look at nine artists who, through their creative expressions, have inspired the union of all Africans, home and abroad. Not only have they inspired unity, because they have also challenged Western and colonial narratives about Africa through their works. Renowned for his 1958 novel, Things Fall Apart, Nigeria's Chenwa Achibe's work challenged Western narratives about Africa and contributed to the decolonization of African literature, asserting the importance of indigenous African culture and values. One of such false Western narratives about Africa is that Africans are not time conscious. However, Achibe made it known in his novel that Africans perceive space and time differently to the West by making references to the fact that Africans tie time to specific events in nature. Before the introduction of clocks to Africa, Africans scheduled things for the sunrise, sunset, and dark times, planting seasons, harvesting periods, market weeks, and moons. On the whole, Achiba's narrative masterfully captures the cultural richness of Igbo society delving into its customs and traditions, spirituality and social structures. He was motivated to write Things Fall Apart because he wanted to retell the story of the Africans because European imperialists and enslavers in the arts had depicted us in an unfair one-dimensional representation. Some of the striking themes include the humanity of African societies, patriarchy, culture clash and class struggles. Things Fall Apart has become a classic not only in African literature but in global literary discourse, contributing to a more inclusive understanding of world history. Ghana's Ama Ata Edu was an author, playwright and poet. In 1965, he published The Dilemma of a Ghost, making her the first published African female publicist. Her works of fiction particularly deal with the tension between Western and African worldviews. One of her most popular works, Our Sister Killjoy, was published in 1977. The novel revolves around the themes of feminism, Pan-Africanism, neocolonialism, consciousness, lesbianism, and a term she coined as Bintus. Ama Ata Edu, through Sisi, protagonist of the novel, observes that other Africans who have travelled to Europe for educational purposes and greener pastures and in the process forgotten their culture and motherland are all sellouts. Edu again touches on the effect of the aftermath of enslavement and colonialism, how the culture and traditions of the enslaver and the colonizer are still instilled into the minds of the colonizer. Incorporating the Akan philosophy of Sankofa 
Edo uses CC to represent the need to have a connection to one's past. Ama Ata Edo is very critical of Africans' adulation of Europeans. South Africa's Mariam Makeba, who is known as Mama Africa through her music, advocated for social justice and highlighted the struggles of apartheid in South Africa. She was a singer, songwriter, actress, and civil rights activist. Her songs became anthems for the anti apartheid movement, inspiring solidarity across the continent. Throughout the 1960s, Makiba strengthened her involvement in a range of black centered political movements, including the civil rights, anti apartheid, black consciousness, black power movement. She visited Kenya in 1962 in support of the country's independence from British colonial rule and raised funds for its independent leader, Jomo Kenyatta. Nigeria's Wole Soyinka is a playwright and poet who used his art to address political and social issues in Africa. His works often explore the themes of power, corruption, and the struggle for independence, making him a prominent voice in Pan-Africanism. In 1986, he became the first African to receive the Nobel Prize for Literature. His novel, The Lion and the Jewel, was published in book form in 1963. One of the striking features of the novel is the theme of the legacies of colonialism. Even though Soyinka doesn't deal with this directly as he does in some of his other works, colonialism and imperialism in Nigeria exist below the place surface. Soyinka posits that even though Nigeria had had her independence from Britain, she was never going back in time and undo Britain's impact on Nigeria. Kenya's Ngugi Wathiongo is an author and academic who was being described as East Africa's leading novelist. Alongside writers such as Chino Achibe and Wole Soyinka, he was part of a literary scene that flourished in the 1950s and 60s. During the last years of colonialism on the continent, his writing includes Decolonizing the Mind and Petals of Blood. These two critique the legacy of colonialism and advocate for the restoration of African languages and cultures. The books discuss the role of language in national culture, history, and identity. Gogi Wathiongo argues that Africa can break free from Western control over its resources and culture by replacing the use of European languages with native languages. Other themes include the impact of colonization on African history and identity, the importance of language and storytelling in reclaiming African perspectives, the need to dismantle harmful stereotypes and misrepresentations, and finally, the call to action, collective efforts to liberate Africa from colonial legacies. Kofi Awuno was a Ghanaian poet, author, and diplomat. His work combined the poetic traditions of his native ever people of West Africa with contemporary and religious symbolism to depict Africa during decolonization. In Ninth of My Blood, published in 1971, Kofi Awuno uses the medium of traditional ever song to lament the neglect of his ancestral shrines and gods by a society perverted by the senseless cathedral of Western culture. Awuno blames the uneasiness and instability of the contemporary Africa on the failure to maintain an organic continuity with the past. A complete divorce from the old values has led to unproductiveness and imitation. The poet therefore advocates return to the culture of his forefathers to which Africans must owe their identity and lifestyle. Kofi Anidoho is a Ghanaian poet, critic, essayist, and editor. Anidoho treats themes in his native Ghana's political struggles, the abuse of the oppressed, social decay, the resilience and strength of the African people, and what he sees as the destruction of African traditions and values after the arrival of Christian missionaries. His first collection, Brain Surgery, contains many poems that were first published in periodicals in 1985. There are verses that reveal the poet's political 
and social consciousness revolving around themes of materialism, the laws of African ancestry through the spread of Christianity, Ghana's moral and social decay, political corruption, and the betrayals of fellow countrymen who flee the hardships of their native land in order to live lives of ease and comfort elsewhere. Nigeria's Felakuti is the pioneer of Afrobeat music. He's a musician, band leader, composer, political activist, and pan-Africanist. He used his platform to criticize political oppression and advocate for pan-Africanism. His music and activism challenged colonial legacies promoted African unity and liberation. Kuti was highly engaged in political activism in Africa from the 1970s until his death. He criticized the corruption of Nigerian government officials and the mistreatment of Nigerian citizens. He spoke of colonialism as the root of the social, economic, and political problems that plagued the African people. Kuti's protest songs covered themes Inspired by the realities of corruption and socio-economic inequality in Africa, Kuti strongly believed in Africa and always preached peace among its people. He thought the most important way for them to fight European cultural imperialism was to support traditional religions and lifestyles in their continent. Kuti is remembered as an influential icon who voiced his opinions on matters that affected the nation through his music. Abladi Glover is a Ghanaian painter and educator. He has exhibited widely, building an international reputation over several decades, as well as being regarded as a seminal figure on the West African art scene. Glover's paintings celebrate the vibrancy and the resilience of African communities, highlighting the beauty and the complexity of everyday life on the continent. His arts promote a sense of pride and unity amongst Africans, contributing to the cultural renaissance and pan-African consciousness.